In the quiet suburbs of Mesa, Arizona, a gruesome act was about to unfold. A seemingly tranquil place, the warmth of the desert sun belied the chilling event that would soon send shockwaves through the community. In the heart of this sleepy town, a crime of passion was brewing. A crime that would soon capture the attention of the entire nation. The unsuspecting victim was Travis Alexander, a charismatic motivational speaker and salesman, known for his vibrant energy and zest for life. Tragically, this life was about to be extinguished in the most brutal of ways. Enter Jody Ann Arias, the woman at the center of this chilling tale. With her striking looks and seemingly innocent demeanor, Jody was an unlikely suspect. Yet, beneath the surface, a darker side lay hidden, a side that would soon be revealed in all its terrifying reality. You see, Jody and Alexander had been involved in a passionate and tumultuous relationship, a relationship that according to friends and family, was filled with jealousy, obsession, and intense emotional turmoil. As the relationship deteriorated, Jody's behavior became increasingly erratic and obsessive. On that fateful day in June of 2008, Jody made her way to Alexander's home. What transpired within those walls was nothing short of horrific. Alexander was found brutally murdered his body bearing the marks of a struggle that spoke volumes about the terror he must have experienced in his final moments. Jody was soon identified as the prime suspect. Despite her initial claims of innocence, the evidence was mounting against her. From bloodstains found at the scene to incriminating photographs discovered on a digital camera, the net was closing in on Jody. Thus began one of the most sensational trials in American history. A story of love turned lethal. As the gavel fell and the courtroom doors swung open, the stage was set for a legal battle that would captivate the nation and expose the chilling reality of what can happen when love turns to obsession. Arias's trial commenced in 2013, gripping the nation with its shocking details and twists. The saga began with Arias's arrest in July 2008 for the murder of her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander. Initially, Arias denied any involvement in the crime despite overwhelming forensic evidence linking her to the scene. As the trial unfolded, Jody's story began to change. No longer claiming innocence, she shifted to a self-defense narrative. She painted a picture of an abusive relationship, alleging that she had killed Alexander in a desperate act of self-preservation. The prosecution, however, presented a different story, one of a jealous ex-girlfriend who brutally murdered Alexander in a fit of rage. One of the most chilling elements of the trial was the presentation of explicit photos, these images, taken from Arias's camera, depicted both her and Alexander in intimate moments just hours before his death. More disturbingly, the camera also contained images of Alexander's lifeless body, inadvertently captured during the murder. Another unprecedented aspect of the trial was Arias herself taking the stand. For 18 days, she held the courtroom's attention, weaving a tale of fear, love, and betrayal. Yet, her inconsistent stories and lack of remorse raised more doubts than sympathy. Throughout the trial, Arias' defense team attempted to discredit the prosecution's narrative, aiming to paint Arias as a victim rather than a cold-blooded killer. However, the jury was not swayed. The forensic evidence, the explicit photos, and Arias' own testimony worked against her. The trial of Jody Ann Arias was a spectacle that had the nation on edge, a real-life drama filled with scandal, intrigue, and murder. Despite her attempts to convince the jury of her innocence, Arias' actions spoke louder than her words. In May 2013, Arias was found guilty of first-degree murder, sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought a close to a case that had captivated the public's attention for years, leaving behind a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of seemingly ordinary individuals. While Arias began her life sentence, a new terror was about to strike in Parkland, Florida. In the peaceful suburban community of Parkland, a horror was about to unfold that would shock the nation and the world. It was February 14, 2018, a day that should have been filled with love and affection, but instead would be remembered for a horrifying act of violence. In the heart of this community stood Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, a beacon of learning and growth for the youth of Parkland. On this fateful day, the tranquility of the school was shattered when a former student, Nicholas Cruz, unleashed a barrage of gunfire on unsuspecting students and staff. Cruz, an expelled student with a troubled past, had returned to his old school, not to reconcile or make amends, 
but to carry out a premeditated act of violence. Armed with a semi-automatic rifle, he opened fire, turning the hallways of learning into corridors of death. In a matter of minutes, 17 lives were brutally cut short, and 17 others were left injured, their lives changed forever. The victims ranged from bright-eyed freshmen just beginning their high school journey, to dedicated teachers who had devoted themselves to shaping the minds of future generations. Each life lost represented a unique story, a dream unfulfilled, a potential unrealized. As the news of the tragedy spread, the world looked on in horror and disbelief. How could such a senseless act of violence occur in a place meant for growth and learning? How could a former student carry out such a monstrous act against his peers and teachers? With the arrest of Nicholas Cruz, the difficult quest for answers began. The evidence was overwhelming, the crime was unspeakable, and the suspect was in custody. The stage was set for one of the most high-profile and emotionally charged trials in recent memory. And so another infamous trial was set to begin. Cruz's trial began in 2018, a disheartening reminder of the recurring issue of gun violence in America. The proceedings were as chilling as they were revealing. At the heart of it all was Nicholas Cruz, a young man whose actions had caused untold grief and horror. The trial was marked by Cruz's confession. He admitted to the heinous act, detailing his actions with a terrifying coldness that sent shivers down the spines of those present. However, it was not a simple case of guilt and punishment. His defense team emphasized Cruz's mental health issues, painting a picture of a deeply troubled individual who had slipped through the cracks of society. The defense argued that Cruz's actions were not born out of inherent evil, but rather a failure of the system to provide adequate mental health support. They pointed to his history of depression, ADHD, and autism, suggesting that these conditions played a significant role in his actions. Cruz's defense was not an attempt to absolve him of his crimes, but to shed light on the underlying issues that may have contributed to the tragedy. However, the trial was not solely about Cruz. It was about the survivors, the ones left behind to grapple with the consequences of his actions. Their testimonies were heartbreaking, tales of loss and trauma that underscored the human cost of Cruz's actions. They spoke of friends and loved ones lost, a future stolen and lives forever altered. Their words served as a stark reminder of the impact of gun violence a testament to the pain and suffering it leaves in its wake. Despite the defense's arguments, the weight of Cruz's crimes was undeniable. The court was faced with the task of delivering justice, of holding Cruz accountable for his actions. In 2021, Cruz pleaded guilty to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder, awaiting his sentence. It was a moment of reckoning, a grim conclusion to a trial that had laid bare the depths of human tragedy and the urgent need for change. Two chilling crimes, two trials, and two perpetrators awaiting their fate. The reverberations of these cases have echoed throughout American society. They've left indelible imprints, not only on the lives of the victims' families, but also on our collective consciousness. A stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk behind seemingly ordinary facades. The trials of Jodianne Arias and Nicholas Cruz have underscored the importance of a robust and thorough justice system. They've shown us how meticulously investigators, attorneys, and jurors must work in unison to sift through layers of evidence and emotion, to separate fact from fiction, truth from deceit. Each piece of evidence, each testimony, each cross-examination, and each closing argument is a critical cog in the intricate machinery of justice. In the disconcerting wake of these crimes, we've seen the resilience of communities, the strength of families, and the unwavering commitment of our justice system to uphold the truth. We've seen ordinary people become extraordinary advocates, transforming their pain and grief into a powerful call for justice and change. These cases have also underscored the importance of vigilance and awareness in our everyday lives. They've reminded us that we must look out for each other, for our neighbors, our friends, and our family members. They've reminded us that we must be the eyes and ears of our communities, always ready to step forward, to speak up, to act. The pursuit of justice is a journey, often a long and arduous one. It's a journey that demands our collective courage, patience, and determination. It's a journey that requires us to question, to challenge, to insist on accountability. So as we reflect on these chilling crimes and the trials that followed, let's remember the echoes of justice that they've left behind. Let's remember the lives that were lost, the families that were shattered, and the communities that were forever changed. As we delve into the darkness of these crimes, we're reminded of the relentless pursuit of justice.
a beacon of light in the darkest of times.